Hey everybody, um, I'm going to show a quick video here on how to make a snail trap. If any of you have a planted tank, chances are you've had snails and at first you may think it's all great and dandy, um, like the Malaysian trumpet snails actually are beneficial because they can burrow through the substrate and help prevent dead spots. Um, but they do get out of control. So once they get to that point, um, they, they create a, a strain on the bio load of the aquarium. Um, you know, like 30, 40 snails isn't a big deal, but when you start getting thousands of them, I mean, you might as well put a thousand fish in your tank if you get my drift. So anyways, I've made this cheap and easy snail trap that works quite well. Um, there's not a whole lot in there right now. There is an apisto in there. But it works. Um, I think I've already I took a big chunk out of the problem in this tank. And I wish that I had taken a video of it when I realized it was a problem. As I was sitting here at the couch looking over when the lights turned off and there was literally thousands of snails coming out of the substrate all along the lip of the tank here. And we looked in there were just there were snails everywhere. So I made the trap, get like a good bulk of them out of there, and I got a couple um, assassin snails that will go in next, and that will just kind of help keep them in check. Um, if I do notice they're still getting bad, then I'll throw the trap in there, and it'll work. So, to make it, all you need is two soda bottles. Um, got these from our neighbor. Um, this is a Pepsi bottle, that one's Mountain Dew, of course. Um, I guess you could use water bottles, but these ones, the shape of them, actually, I found to help out quite a bit. Um, so you need the bottles, a rubber band, a carpenter's knife, a drill, and a couple rocks, actually, too. The rocks are just in there to help keep it weighed down so it doesn't float around. And fish food. You just put fish food in there as the bait, and they'll come get it. Others say, um, Cucumber, or lettuce, all kinds of stuff works as well, but I've already had the fish food for the fish, so it worked out. So we're going to set it up on the tripod, and I'll, I'll show you how, you how you make it. Okay, we're back. So what you need to start with is your two bottles, of course, and you're going to have to cut off the top and the bottom of the bottle. Um, I guess you could, if you wanted to, just make it even easier, just cut off the top and not the bottom. But I like to have two entrances into the uh, trap. It'll increase your chances of getting more snails. Um, so when I cut it, I actually cut just past this lip here. When you get that flare, it actually gives the, the cap more room to kind of sink into the bottle. So I'll go ahead and do these. And you basically just put it inside, just past that lip and cut it all the way across. Being careful not to cut your fingers off. If you still have your fingers on, it makes it easier to get the snails out of the trap. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the end of this one and then cut off just the, uh, the top part of this one and then I'll pick it back up. Okay, here we are, I got the ends cut off, and here's just a quick demonstration of what, if you just wanted to make it easier, you can just cut the top off and flip it over, and that would be your trap. You don't have to worry about this end, really. Um, but it cuts your chances in half, basically. You can get twice as many snails in if you got openings at both ends. Um, they're not exactly the smartest creatures, so it just makes it easier for them to find the opening and go in. Um, the concept of this is basically the exact same as a fish trap. Um, they basically they go in and then it's hard for them to find the, uh, the hole to get out. So here we have these, test fitted it, and you got to uh, try to cut the bottle long enough, you know, a little bit past that lip 
and it'll give you more room. You don't want the caps touching when you put them in there. The one that I have in the tank, they're a little bit close, so I have them cocked off like that so that they're not touching. And you also don't want the cap to actually touch the bottle like this inside because that'll make it easier for the snails that are climbing on this to find that hole to get out. So you'll just want them just to be just off like that. Okay, so the next step now is to drill a hole in the cap for the snails to get in. Um, you don't want to just take the cap off and let them go in. If you have bigger fish, that's not a problem. You can do that. Um, but the smaller the hole is, the harder it will be for the snails to actually find a way out of the trap. And if you have small fish like rams, rams will get inside that trap and then they go nuts when they can't get out. Um, I have the Apisto in there that keeps finding his way in, but he doesn't really panic too much, so it hasn't been a big deal. He just sits in there till morning. So, I've got to drill a bit, and depending on what kind of snails you're trying to get, you know, if it's just little pond snails, you can make the hole smaller. If it's the Malaysian trumpet snails, some of them are a little bit bigger, so you want to make a little bit bigger hole. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to fit the biggest of the snails, because um, the bigger ones are a lot easier for you to just hand pick out when you see them. So, I, I don't even know what size this is. Um, it's just big enough, you can see here. And the easiest way to do it is just to leave the cap on the top. That way it gives you something to hold on to as you put it down and you start drilling on it. Now you have to be very careful that you don't drill into your hands. Um, and if you can actually, if you can use something like a center punch or something like that, you can start a dent in the top. You can also use a knife. Basically just put the tip of the the blade right in the center of the cap and twist it a little bit. This will give the bit something to grab onto so it doesn't try to wander off once you start drilling. You can see that. Do it on both caps. Easy step. You might save your hand or whatever else once you start drilling. Okay, so now um, this is our TV tray that we actually use, so I don't want to just drill. If it goes through into the TV tray, I'll get in trouble. The T's right there. So, <laughs> so I'm going to pause it again. I'll go get a little piece of wood to put down as a backer, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Got me a little scrap piece of 2x4 here, so I don't drill into the uh, table. All right, so you're going to put your cap right on your 2x4. Going to hold it down firmly, put the tip of the drill, the very pointy tip there, focus, in that little hole that you started, that little dent. And then when you start drilling, start slow so it doesn't take off. Once it, gets, once it starts going into it, you can speed it up a little bit. Okay, so there's the initial hole on that. Um, the Malaysian trumpet snails are a little bit elongated, so I like to take the bit and hold it in there and just make it come a little bit to one side or the other, just to elongate it. I don't want the hole necessarily wider, just longer. So just put the bit in there, turn it on, and put pressure to one side. just a little bit wider than it is long. That doesn't make sense, but you get the point. Do it to both, both pieces. Okay, that one's a little wider than I would have actually wanted. Um, I do have another cap that I'll go ahead and fix, but I'll do that later. Okay, now I forgot a tool that you're going to need. Be right back again. Okay, this was uh, not in my tools needed section there. Um, you need something sharp, something small. This is my little dental tool kit. Um, if you don't have one of these, these come in handy for everything. 
um, use them to take off the rubber seals and filters. Um, you could take those off the O-rings, try not to puncture them, but it's a good way to get those out to put uh, silicone lubricant on them. Do that and they'll last almost forever in your tank. You don't have to worry about them dry rotting. So anyways, you could use that for a center punch or a scribe, whatever. Just a sharp tool that you can poke a small hole into. This. I don't like to poke the holes into the base of the trap because you're trying to... The, the reason for doing it is to let some of the smell of the food out, the bait. So I actually put the holes inside the cap. That way the smell is more concentrated here and they'll make them go into the trap rather than trying to stick on the side of the trap. If you have a lot of holes here, that's where the smell's coming out. The snails are going to sit right there on that, trying to get through little holes that they can't. So if you just take your little punch and start putting holes into the actual cap, be careful not to poke your hand. That's why I'm putting it outwards rather than in. There's no specific amount how many you have to do. Just You just want the smell to get out. I didn't mention either. You, you can get these dental picks at Harbor Freight. Really cheap. You get the 20% off coupons all the time from them in the mail and that. Um, good purchase. I use these for a ton of stuff. So, that's about it, to be honest with you. We are done. Um, rinse it off, of course, so these little plastic scraps aren't in there. And I don't have my pebbles that I put in there. Okay, I'll get them. Okay, I got them. So, pebbles. Two little pebbles. Two is probably more than you even need. Just throw those in there. Your bait. Like I said, the best bait that I've found so far is Hakaria algae wafers. Um, I haven't tried any of the fresh vegetables yet, but that works for me. Food in there, the pebbles. Put both caps on. Then just take your rubber band. Put it across both ends. Like I said, I like to cock mine over a little bit so that they're not basically facing each other. And that they're not touching the edges of the, the trap itself. And that's it. Now, at nighttime, um, just before or just after the lights go off, throw this in there and uh, the snails will go in there and you'll have hundreds of them to throw away, basically. You can... Uh, any, you know anybody who has puffer fish, you can give them to them, they'll eat them. Um, I've tried giving the Malaysian trumpet snails to my loaches. They don't seem to do much to them. Um, they eat other snails, but not the Malaysian trumpet snails. Not, not good enough to keep them under control anyway. So, there you have it. Just when you put it in too, just kind of put it down on this, you know, pointing down for a second and let the air come out. The air bubbles and it'll sink right down to the bottom. Check it in the morning, take any snails out so they don't die or whatever. Good to go. Hope it works out for you. Bye.